It's the year 1943. The UK is still struggling in the war against the Nazi. But somewhere in an English country house, the court baker, Alan Turing, and his friends are developing the bomb machine, the machine which will crack the German Enigma code and help win the war. Hi. This momentous event was only possible due to the science of cryptanalysis. Cryptanalysis is the science of analyzing and breaking codes. It aims to understand how they work and how to improve their decryption techniques. The most basic approach to decrypt a letter is known as brute force. This is to try all the possible combinations you can think of. Basic, but it can be effective. Remember, see the ciphering from the semifinals? Well, by shifting down the alphabet one letter at a time, you will have 26 different combinations. Keep trying to resolve the right key to decrypt the message. And that's only one bit of encryption key, while in advanced ciphering methods, using 128-bit encryption keys, you will have this many possibilities to try. The other way to crack a message is to first analyze the code, assess how often a character or a phrase appears and work back from there. This is known as frequency analysis. Back in the 19s, the Arabic mathematician Al-Kindi studied all the possible combinations. He studied all the ciphering methods and he discovered that each language has its own pattern. From there, he established two principles. The first relies on the fact that each language has certain letters that appears more often. The second principle is to find a common word or a phrase that repeats a lot in a language. For example, the word the, which I have used 22 times so far. Using this idea, we can analyze the frequency of this word, which will allow us to decrypt the whole letter. These words are known to cryptographers as crypts. Well, different type of scripts. One of the most famous scripts was the infamous Nazi greeting, which facilitated Turing breaking the aforementioned Enigma code. Nowadays, there are even more techniques used by cryptographers, and the science keep evolving every day. The majority of cryptanalysis work hard to find weaknesses in systems, and their research is used to improve or replace flawed algorithms. This ethical work allows us to save our email safely, keep hackers away from our data, or even have an online meeting with nice people like you guys. But as with most things, there is a dark side. Thank you. Um, hi, Ahmad. Thank you so much for your presentation and I enjoyed um, all your props. So I would love to hear um, a little more about the dark side. You know, what do you think are some of the challenges in the future? Um, maybe that can be used in, in a bad or a negative way. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's a possibility. As I mentioned, the majority of cryptanalysis keep the good work, but this technology could get into the wrong hands. And it did. And we would hear once in a while that once uh, that a politician got hacked his email or a politician got manipulated, this technology could get in the wrong hands and many, many, many incidents could happen. As long as they have the enough data and the right time, they could hack into anything. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Oh, I'm going to thank you very much for your talk and very well use, very good use of the props. That was uh, fantastic. I love that. Uh, well, you, you're speaking about um, cryptography and come cram, uh, cram from a country starts with a Q. So what about quantum computers in cryptography? I, I know there is a menace uh, that quantum computers can break RSA codes, so the codes we rely on. Uh, what are your thoughts about that? What's the role of quantum computers in the future of cryptography? That's, that's a very good question, actually. The main challenge to this whole science is the quantum computers. For example, I mentioned that to, to break into a password that using 128-bit encryption key, you need like millions of possibilities to try. And this is like a piece of cake for quantum computers, which can apply hundreds or billions or billions of 
operations in, in second. And matter of fact, you can all try this website to check like a prop of your password, like an example of your password, but not the actual password, and see how minutes or years it would take. But with quantum computers, everything will got changed. Well, thank you very much. I hope we are able to do some uh, quantum free or quantum secure cryptography. Thank you very much. That was great, Ahmad. I think like your use of like like you said before by Eduardo, your use of props and and everything you had surrounding you and the way you brought it out was almost like watching a magician. It was so slick. Um, so I've just got a question because you had a lot of content there and I love the fact that you didn't just talk about the here and now, you also talked about the history of the topic and how it developed and the different characters involved. So how important do you think that is in science communication to talk about the history and the development of the science that we use now and technology? As a teacher, that's usually what I do, like taking the students in a journey for the past and the future and show them where the science stops every once in a while. And that's give them the imagination to, to, to think or to, to go with the flow, you know? That helps them to, to use their imagination to understand very, very well and link anything around them to science. That's STEM education. Perfect.